absent with the foreign. Mm-hmm. Now we said it's already time. Yes, we are set. Mm. Mm. Can you have a volunteer a girls to give us the opening prayer? Tell me. Oh, go ahead, please. Kaiwa. And let's turn ourselves. Let's turn ourselves and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for enabling us to be here today for protecting us. Lord, I pray, Jesus, that as we go through this lesson, that you may send your Holy Spirit to guide our teachers, that whatever they may teach and whatever we will hear, that we will understand it and we will put it into work. That, yeah, we won't take the lesson for granted. And yeah, Lord, I pray that you will bless the hands, the works of the hands of our teachers. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Jemima. Mr. Samogere, your network is a little breaking, so you had better station yourself in one place. <laughs> okay, let me climb on top of the house. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the heat. Um, dear girls, I want to welcome you for this lesson and uh, want to continue from where we stopped. Remember, we are still looking at the Canadian prelease. Uh, we did the introduction of the Canadian prelease where we looked at the population, we looked at the relief, we looked at the cells, vegetation. Um, climate and all the things under the Canadian prelease. Of course, that introduction was taking us to the different land use, all the types of um, farming carried out in the Canadian prelease. So today that is where we want to start from and actually it's where we stopped last week. And uh, we shall continue from there. So I hope we are ready with our summary books. Please note that um, so far we have looked at two maps, but in your books, you must draw the map that is showing us the provinces of Canada and most of the area that is covered up by the Canadian prelease. So, so I think it was our second map. The first one, the map of North America, was just to remind ourselves of the provinces of Canada, the neighbors and everything. Now that we know, uh, we might not need to draw that one because you actually drew it when we're starting North America, but you have to draw the map showing the Canadian prelis, the different towns, the different provinces, because at any one time, they will ask you to draw that map or they will actually draw it for you and then uh, you would have to fill in. But if you don't draw it in your book and you don't revise it, even if it's drawn for you, it might not be very easy for you to determine uh, the provinces, the towns and probably the area. So it is very important to draw that map and please have it in your books. We want to first do a recap of what we did last week, mainly to do with the types of farming in the Canadian prairies. And um, we are saying that different types of farming, or we could call them land uses in the Canadian prairies. And the first one, we are looking at uh, extensive grain farming. Extensive grain farming. And what is this one? First of all, we have that word grain. What do we mean by that word? And here we are saying this is the growing of cereals on a large scale using scientific methods of farming and mainly for commercial 
purposes. Um, at this point, I'll pause and ask, when we say growing of cereals, uh, who can give us examples of cereals that probably we are referring to under this one? Or have you even grown any cereals at home? Mr. Semoge, are you there? Teacher Juliet? I'm there, I'm there but I, can I request Mr. Nashmol? Okay. To, to call, because I'm using a phone today. Okay. So I can't see most of these um, participants. Okay. Mr. Nashmol, mm. please. Akelo okay, Daniela. Um, rice. Rice. Thank you. Agibole. Maize. Maize, thank you. Lina Ahura. Wheat. Wheat, yes. Mm -hmm. Duffy Namugabo. Oats. Oats. Bolani Janet Stella. Millet. Millet. Mr. Nashmo, do they grow millet in the Canadian prairies? No. So Jovia. one more participant? Jovia Namuga. Sogam. Jovia is saying sogam. Do we have sogam in the Canadian prairies? People remember we are in North America, we are not in Africa. So everything we talk about should be coming from North America. Uh, Brian Chisache. Ba Bali. Bali. Michelle Nakabuye. Wait. Wait. Okay, thank you very much for your contribution. So we're saying those are examples of uh, some of the cereals that are grown in the Canadian prairies, and they are grown on a large scale, and they are for, for commercial purposes. So when we look at um, the extensive farms, what are some of the characteristics of these extensive farms? How would you be able to tell that actually this is an extensive farm? Um, Mr. Nashmol. Still there from the no girls, they, they would be reading out one and probably try to explain. Okay. Akelo Daniela. Um, can be characterized by mechanization. This is looked at the type of machinery used on the on the farm. Okay. Thank you. So we are saying one of the characteristics is uh, mechanization. And here we're saying it's mainly the use of machines. There are four, the extensive farms in the Canadian prairies use different machines to carry out the cultivation and other activities, okay? And these are, uh, maybe that takes us to the second point that if you're going to use machines then that means you need to have large hectares of land. You can't have your one hectare and you'd say you'd keep on using the different machines. So in that case, we are saying that the crops are also grown on a large scale. The next one, number three. The hands are down. Jovia Namuga. Use of scientific methods of farming, like fertilizers, irrigation. I think Okay, so Jovia is saying the other characteristic is that uh, on these farms, they use scientific methods of farming. She has mentioned the use of fertilizers. Probably they need to improve on the nature of the soil, so they apply fertilizers. They also use pesticides just in case the crops are attacked by pests. 
they use herbicides and they also carry out irrigation farming. So all these are scientific methods of farming, but why do they have to apply this so that they can get maximum yields? The next one. I don't, I don't take care. Um, they have high crop yields per unit area of the land. Okay, so high crop yields per unit area of the land. Uh, we have already looked at them using the scientific methods, and it's from these scientific methods that they actually help them to get the high crop yield. So what they'll do whatever it takes to make sure that at the end of the day, when they harvest their yields, they actually have the high yields. Next. So Faith, one or two crops. Rebecca. One or two crops are grown on a large scale, okay? This is more of a plantation farm where you would have one or two crops grown. You can't have like 10 or you can't even have more than two. You either have one specific crop that you are looking at. Remember people mentioned the different cereals. So if you decide to go in for growing of corn, it would be corn, okay? If it is wheat, it would be wheat. However, some people sometimes they decide to add another crop and they have two crops. Next. Sylvia. Okay. It means that most of the work is actually done by the machines. They would need very few workers because the work is done by the machines, but we're saying it is very, uh, it is something that is very expensive because then you would need to bring in most of the machines so that they can do for you the work. However, you must also note that uh, for some of these uh, activities, the farming activities, definitely you can't run away from using labor. That those activities where you would not be able to use machines, but instead you'd have to use labor. And lastly, we have uh, this one that we all skipped, the use of skilled labor force, that um, the people working on these farms must have the skills. You would find that they would have very few that are going to learn on the job. First of all, we have talked about them using machines. So if they're using machines, if they're using scientific methods, then this can only be used where people have the skills. So in that case, that they need a lot of um, skilled labor to carry out the different activities. The other method of farming or type of farming is uh, known as intensive farming. And what do we mean by intensive farming? Under intensive farming, okay, Rebecca. Intensive farming is the growing of crops, fruits, and vegetables, or rearing of animals on a relatively small scale. Okay, so we're saying it is the growing of some crops like fruits, vegetables, and also rearing of animals on a small scale. So here you have uh, the, your small plot of land. However, you come up with uh, um, the crops that you're going to grow or the animals that you're going to rear and use that small piece of land. But at the end of the day, you must make sure you get maximum yields, okay? So when we talk about intensive farming and growing of crops, what are some of the examples of uh, types of farming that are carried out? When we talk about growing of fruits, 
what is that growing of vegetables which agriculture terms are we supposed to use for these um different activities Concunda. floriculture oh what do we mean by that one um floriculture is the growing of um i think flowers and plants flowers and plants growing of flowers oh okay flowers on a on a small scale or on a large scale but in this case because we're talking about intensive farming then they are grown on a small scale any other christabel Christabel. Jovia Namuga. Culture. growing of vegetables. Thank you. Any other? Uh, Kelo Daniela. Poultry farming. Okay. And what is that? Um, this is a rearing of birds on a relatively small scale or okay. on a large scale. Thank you. Zora. Factory farming. What is factory farming? Ah, this okay. is a type of farming where livestock are raised indoors in confined spaces. Okay. Any other that we have left out? Rebecca Faith. Market gardening or track market gardening or track farming where crop where the growing of vegetables, fruits and flowers are is mainly for the urban market. Okay, thank you. So when we look at intensive farming, we're saying there are some characteristics for this type of farming and the first one we're saying because they have to get the maximum yields one they have to use the scientific methods of farming we have already mentioned some of the scientific methods under uh, the extensive farming like use of fertilizers uh, use of pesticides irrigation and others to make sure that they get maximum yields then we're also saying it is capital intensive because they're talking about um, irrigation farming so if you're going to carry out irrigation farming, definitely you need to install the pipes and uh, where to store the water, okay? Then you'd also have to get some machines that you'd use to cultivate the land. Um, the other characteristic, we are saying that they also use skilled labor and um, it is carried out near urban centers or in the urban centers. And who can tell us why do they have to look at urban centers or near the urban centers? Um, the first hand that came up, okay, is about uh, Atukwase Kelly. Um, I think they look for urban centers because there's high market for the goods. Because of the high market? Okay, someone else? Uh, Zora. I think they look for urban areas because they do not require a lot of space. Because they don't uh, require a lot of space and they can easily get it from the urban centers. Maybe, mm -hmm. any other? I'm still looking out for the main reason as to why. Uh, Mbolani Janet. It is because urban areas have good infrastructures, for example, roads. So why do they need the good infrastructure? And remember, we said you can't use the word good in geography. What is good for you might not be good for me. OK. Yes, but um, yes, probably would we'll talk about the efficient transport network or efficient roads but uh, why do they need the the roads what are they for for well, is the transportation of the what of 
of the producers. Okay, so I can't transport them from the villages to the market centers. Why specifically them being near the urban centers? Urban centers have have tarmac roads, while, while villages have feeder roads. Okay. Um. Uh, there is uh, Cynthia Ijang. Um, I think they need good roads. I mean, they need good infrastructure, like the roads for, um, for like the transport of, let me say, dairy products that will get spilled easily. So they need to be closer to where they are going. Okay. Thank you very much, Cynthia. Only that you also use the word good, yet we said we're not supposed to use the word good. Yes, when we look at most of the points we have given, the infrastructure, the market part, and everything. But when you look at this point, why the urban areas, and probably near the urban areas, Cynthia has mentioned it in her explanation that most of these goods are actually perishable goods. And therefore, they need to have them near the urban centers where they have the market, okay? So the main reason is because these are perishable goods and therefore they need to transport them very fast to the market areas before they get spoiled. And lastly, we're saying a lot of um, care is given to the animals and the crops. So it's not like you just um, disperse off your seeds and then leave them there and wait for the harvest. No, you have to give your crops um, a lot of care. You have to carry out weeding. You have to know when they need water and you apply the water. You have to know when they need the fertilizers because you want maximum yields. Um, the other type of farming carried out in um, the Canadian prairies, we're saying there's also mixed farming. And what do we mean by mixed farming? What is involved under this one? Akelo. Um, mixed farming is the growing of crops and growing of animals on the same piece of land for commercial purposes. Okay, I can't do it for subsistence. You can, but mm. because it's the Canadian prairies, Mm. we are looking at it being on the same piece of land for commercial purposes. Okay. And we are saying it is mainly carried out in the northern parts of, of the prairies. Okay. Okay, look, continue reading. Still it under meat farming. Mm -hmm. It involves growing a variety of crops like barley, oats, peas, and flax, as well as rearing a number of animals such as cattle and pigs on the same piece of land for commercial purposes. Okay, and Should last continue? you have cattle ranching, uh, yes. Cut, okay. Did you want to add something under mixed farming? I thought I was going to continue reading, but it's okay. No, you continue. Akelo, are you still there? Okay. Uh, Lindsay, na, na Tavona is on. Eh? Okay, she can read. Can you share it from the beginning? No, from cattle ranching. Okay, cattle ranching. It is the rearing of animal techniques for commercial purposes. It is mainly for beef production. That is important. When we talk about ranches, we are actually talking about um, rearing of animals for beef production, not dairy. That one, you need to take note of that. And um, under this one, we are saying, 
it can be carried out in areas where we have um, a variety of uh, grasslands. And remember, under the Canadian Predis, we said that that word means grassland. And probably this is why they can actually carry out cattle ranching because they have the grasslands to act as pastures for the animals. They also need to be near water sources because um, animals also, as much as they have to feed on the pastures, but they also need water um, to supplement on their feeds and of course other feeds. And then again, we said the grasslands are mainly plain lands or flat lands where actually animals can easily move from one place to another. So those are some of the types of um, farming in the Canadian prairies. We shall look at some of them in details. For example, we talked about extensive um, farming or extensive cereal farming. And under that one, we want to look at uh, wheat farming in the Canadian prelis. If I may ask, apart from Mr. Nashmol, is there anyone else who has been to the Canadian prelis or to Canada and more so in one of these provinces that we we're talking about? Mr. Nashmon. Yes, Nyabo. People have not traveled. Don't you think you need to travel with them to this area? Well, that would be an exciting, it will be an exciting experience for us to be able to visit the United States of America and Canada. <laughs> <laughs> so people, you know what to do. You have to negotiate with teacher Nash to make sure that uh, you visit some of these areas, okay? He's willing to travel with you. So after the lesson, probably you can negotiate with him and see what it takes well uh, of course you. i'll give them uh, i'll give them a few tips that uh, they really need to cause a number of times we do post on uh, social media certain uh, uh, statements or pictures that are so uh, are so bad that uh, they might cost us because you need to have good conduct if you're going to be able to get an american visa or a canadian visa Oh, but you miss it. Oh, yeah, So I, I hope you've also noted that the accent is also very important. If you have one like mine, you might not get there. Okay, let's continue. Um. We have talked about the Canadian prelis. We have looked at um, the types of soils. We have looked at the vegetation. We have looked at the climate. And of course, we are saying all these are very important when it comes to farming. The important aspects that if you, you don't have them, probably you might not be able to grow some of these crops. I hope you remember what they discussed under climate the relief, and then the cells. So here we are saying that um, the Canadian prelis is well known for the growing of wheat. Actually, when you talk about the prelis, the first thing that would come to someone's mind would be growing of wheat. But we have already looked at the other types of farming that are carried out. It's not only wheat, but we are saying it is one of the main crops that are grown in this area. And we're saying that Canada is the leading exporter of wheat in the entire world. Um, we have two types of wheat. We have the spring wheat and then the winter wheat. The difference is the spring wheat is mainly grown in spring and harvesting is done in late summer. Yet the winter one is grown in the late uh, autumn or early winter. However, when we talk about the Canadian prelis, 
when they looked at the two types of wheat, they decided to concentrate on the growing of spring wheat. And it is the main type of wheat that is grown in this area. Mr. Nashmon. Yes, Nyabo. Why do you think they, they looked at spring wheat, not the other one? No, actually, when uh, I think the girls would need to uh, do a research and a survey about the different seasons. And uh, when they can someone tell us what spring is all about, so we can be able to uh, get a clear understanding of why we have the spring.